Or yeah. sits at the piano and sings one of his own tunes. <laughs> you see, the audience is not there really to test us or, 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 or to criticize us. They're there to have a good time. Yeah. But we also so look If the artist's uh, out there just like throwing it away, oh, here comes Adrian Believer, another yeah, song yeah. I have to sing. Yeah, and I'm bored. No, it's yeah. not that way. No. It's like these people are excited and they're singing the tune and I'm excited because they're excited. Now, that all might be some sort of act or something, but that's what they want to see and that's what I and do. And you believe it. I have to oh, believe sure. it. I've got to believe that this is the first time I've sung Daydream Believer, at least to this crowd. Some yeah. of them have never seen me live. So I want to feel good about what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And if I feel good, they'll enjoy yeah, what I'm doing. Yeah. I think you also have to make clear your intent. You know, if, if you get out on stage and you just sing some cover tune, yeah. uh, then what's the point? And we've done that. I've done that. I've gone out and sang, like, Give Me Some Lovin' by uh, Spencer Davis Group, which is one of my favorite songs of all mm -hmm. time. And once, once I said, I just got to do this on stage, and I went out there and I sang it, and oh, I just loved it. And the audience was like, "Huh? What are you covering <laughs> a Spencer Davis?" Yeah. Right. And so then I realized that, <laughs> that if you make clear your intent of why you're doing a, a non-monkey tune, and they'll they do non-monkey tunes, yeah. well, no, you bring them along with you. Like yeah. for instance, I get out there and I explain. At one point, my, my mom was a singer. She sang in big bands, and she sang a blues tune. So I'm going to sing an old so an old song now that I remember my mother singing to me when I was in the womb. Yeah. It sounded different, of course. It sounded like <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 and so then oh, the audience... You just get warmed up, then, aren't you? <laughs> and that influenced me enormously. Yeah. And then you bring them along with you and they go, oh, wow, now I understand yeah. why he sings the way he does. David does Oliver. He does a song. He remembers his mom playing on, the, on, the, on, the, on an old 78 record. And if you do it, and if you explain you the purpose of singing this song that is a non-monkey tune, say, then the audience comes along with you, and you take them through a little, a little time travel, a little trip through time. Why on earth did it have such, I mean, a powerful effect? The monkey? The monkey. Well, I have my own opinion. I mean, what? David, I'm sure, will have his. There was a number of reasons. I think initially it was, it was speaking to the moment, which was that there was every young guy and many women at the time were trying to become rock and rollers because of the Beatles, because of pop music, because of the Beach Boys it at was the, the time. 60s, yeah. So it was a little bit about why everybody wants to be in a rap group today. Yeah. So it was speaking to that, and the show was about an, a group yeah. that wanted to be famous, like all the other kids in the United in States the and the world that yeah. were wanting to try and be famous. So, so it was speaking to that and about that. That's what the show was about, and that's why the show, I think, was so successful. The other reason is, is that, like I say, we had such incredible songwriters, Carol yeah. King and Neil Diamond and Harry Nielsen and Boyce and Hart. They didn't Jason write... Robert, they Lord just... Taylor, <laughs> they didn't Martin write... Spencer. But really, when you think about the 60s and what that's come to represent, uh, with hindsight, it was mm. a very political time, you guys weren't singing about that, you weren't speaking to that, you weren't the voice of the generation no. in that sense, yet it persists. It means well, not everybody wants to listen well, to Led Zeppelin or Jimi Hendrix, you yeah. know. There are some sort of families going on in the world. And Didn't you know, Jimi Hendrix open for you? Yeah, he did. <laughs> he did. He did. For about eight, ten shows. He's a great guy. We hung out with him. I, I have one story, Jimi Hendrix. He was in New York at staying at a, a hotel there. And, and, and I was in the room with Jimi Hendrix and Stephen Stills. And it, yeah. was, it was freezing cold, I remember, in the room. And they were playing and stuff. And he came walking in the door. And he started... Doing his drum Doing thing. his drum well, with actually, his drum. And <laughs> I know that, but listen, okay, don't be here's the deal, what well, the thing was, all of a sudden, you know, I saw Hendrick turn around, he went, hey, that's just what we needed, you know, <laughs> and he's like, and so it was kind of interesting, yeah. musicians never really criticize each other that much, you know, everybody's in it for the same, yeah. same reason, same end, so we'd see the association, the Beach Boys, we'd see, you know, the Turtles, we'd see Stephen Stills and uh, Graham Nash, and yeah. Neil Young and all these people, and it was sort of like, it wasn't quite, hey, we'll knock you off the charts next week, yeah. right? so it was more of a family yeah. thing, yeah. whereas now, everyone's so now isolated, it's, such it's big business, business. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. tour yeah. buses and more, yeah. private planes, and, you know, we've got to play the state, you know, we had all that, and I, I must say, it's still there. The other it's thing about the monkeys also, uh, that, that I think uh, contributed to the success of the show, and the whole spirit of it, is that it, was, it wasn't topical or satirical, we weren't allowed to be topical, right, right. Or, 
But it wasn't also, it wasn't satirical. Whereas a show like Laugh-In, which is yes. a great show, yeah. but if you didn't watch the news that week, you didn't, you didn't know understand what it was about. What it was about. Yeah. So if you watch a, a, a sketch like you've been showing, yeah. that's timeless. The yeah. fact we have bell bottoms on and paisley shirts, the humor yeah. was timeless. And the producers were very, very clever, and I know that they briefed their writers to do this. They did not want humor that was going to be topical or satirical because they knew that it would have a very short half-life. Yeah. And a few and years you later, in reruns for you know <laughs> because it's the Marx Brothers, yeah, or it's Laurel and Hardy, or it's like I Love Lucy works yeah. for the same reason over and over again because it had nothing to do with when the it time. was made. So final thoughts on Mickey Dolan's and Davy Jones. Uh, sum up. Monkeys, as you look around your own world, here you guys are, you know, alive and vibrant, still doing all this stuff, and, and plus the other things in your life, but it's a generation that's starting to disappear. George Harrison, John Phillips, and John Lennon, and is, will it outlive your actual physical presences here? Well, clearly, I mean, it's already outlived my physical <laughs> presence. No, 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 you're still here. Yeah, no, no, it's true. Um, yeah, of course, and you know, the monkeys will go on uh, a lot longer than, than I will, and that's one of the reasons why I feel it's important to kind of maintain the integrity, the integrity of it, um, because it, to some degree we have no choice. It is going to go on with or without us. So you might as well enjoy it and be part of it. I think Davy said you said that sometimes, but it's like the mafia. I mean, once you're in, yeah, you're in. You're <laughs> in. I, mean, I, I look, I look at, I look at this. You know, um, <laughs> I look at this like as you mentioned the Marx Brothers, yeah. the Peace Jesus, the Bowie Boys, the Dead End Kids, the Monkeys, and I, I, I know that it will happen. You know, in 50 years from now, my grandkids are going to be looking at me. You know, uh, well, I'm going to be well gone by then. <laughs> And they're going to say, well, that's granddad up there, you know, oh, that's, you know, that great granddad, or however it works out. Yeah. It's going to show. I know it will because of the kind of interest that it's been given over the last 35 years. Yeah. Almost 36, 7 years. And now you're coming out on DVD, <laughs> so you'll last again. Yeah. I do think it's important, though, that it, it, to make a distinction between yourself and the person. You know, that it's, it's so important. Um, you know, it, if I ever start really believing that I am Mickey Dolan's or the Monkeys, then I'm in trouble. Yeah. And that's when you, you, you start to lose a sense of reality, a lo a lose a sense of who you are. The classic story is like the Lone Ranger, that guy that played the Lone Ranger, that later on in, in his life, he started wearing the mask and the gun yeah. and the, uh, yeah. on the hat when he went shopping. Yeah. He really thought he was the Lone Ranger. And there lies insanity. And as long as you can keep a distinction between the person and the persona, then you have a chance of surviving. And to have those other things in your other interests. And have other interests in your life. You know, but if Britney Spears, God love her, ever starts really believing she is Britney Spears, that person you see yeah, on, on the television, then, you're, you're, then you've lost. I, you know, I think time. Michael Jackson can go to the supermarket as long as he doesn't go on Friday night when everyone's shopping for the weekend. <laughs> if he goes on Wednesday night and he doesn't come in his Rolls Royce and moonwalk into the cheese department, you know, I mean, then he's going to get away with some Gorgonzola. And no, no problem. And he can go to the movies. He can go anywhere because people are respectful of that. Once in a while, oh, Michael gets out, there he goes. But yeah. you don't have to be scurrying around and being famous, you know. Yeah. You can just go and be a regular person. Be famous for being be famous. famous. Yeah. yeah. You know, that, that, that's just that kind of thing. Are you, I mean, you have an interest in all these other things, science, and, and you've gone on to other things. Are you optimists as you look at your world? I mean, I think all of the world has changed for us post September 11th. What's your frame of mind? Well, September 11th didn't surprise me. The only thing that surprised me is it hadn't happened sooner. You see, after living for 12 years in England, yeah. um, and under the, threat of the, under the threat of the IRA, I was used to having armed soldiers at the airport, and I heard bombs go off, and, and you know, think I'd be driving down through Park Lane, and all of a sudden the police would, like, shut it down because there was something had blown up. I was only surprised it had, hadn't hurt <laughs> happen sooner. Well, we're probably and I think it's a bit of a wake-up call. Yeah. And it's about time that we realize that this world is not necessarily a very pleasant, safe place to be all the time. It's been wonderful talking to you both. Thank you very much, Davy Jones Thank you. and Nick Dolan, Thanks. the monkeys, yeah, well, walking down memory lane, but also seeing you both then and now. A real pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for being with us.